Karma has come for passengers in a boat who repeatedly harassed a different boat that was flying an LGBTQ flag. Now, obviously it's Pride Month, and so I'm guessing the boat with the flag is celebrating Pride Month, but the other boat was not pleased about it. So um, the bigots in the boat that were harassing the boat with the pride flag decided to just continuously like circle around it, harass them. I'll show you a picture. Robbie, a passenger on the vessel being harassed, recalls that he had seen a woman from the harassing boat flip them off as they approached their vessel. So we have an image of that and you can see it. We've blurred the middle finger, but you can kind of see what that whole scene looked like. Then the boat quickly made a sharp turn back towards us and went around around us and then again personally heard I personally heard someone shout out I thought to be a, a the word gaze. So I asked my brother to pull out his phone and blatantly start recording in hopes that it would avoid conflict if they noticed, right? So that's part of the reason why we've got video of this. We're not showing the video because of the middle fingers and the, you know, cursing or whatever, but we've got the screenshots to show what happened. Then they attempted to speed away as they left a large cloud of smoke surrounding the area we occupied. After a moment, we heard a loud backfire and a sputter come from the boat. Though I could not see the boat in the direction, I could see a cloud of black smoke rising quickly. So Robbie, the witness, the person who was in the boat that was being harassed, is the one sharing that with us. And then you see the harassing boat in flames. I don't know what exactly happened. I don't know if it was an engine issue, but it's in flames. And the passengers of that boat, of course, had no choice but to jump out, leaving them stranded in the middle of this lake. And guess what Robbie's boat did? They went to the aid of the individuals who were in the harassing boat. In fact, we have some video to share with you. Let's take a look. All right, so uh, all right, my mic's up, good. So karma hits the boaters who harassed. So this is basically showing the entire situation. You see the flames uh, start up. Let's keep watching. You see the harassers <laughs> swimming in the middle of the lake, and they end up getting saved <laughs> by <laughs> by the very people who uh, they were harassing. So I get hysterical. I start freaking out with the dogs. I'm like, oh my god, this <laughs> so don't in the water. Yeah, go home. Swear to God. Kind of some funny karma, you know, they came out and did a bunch of circles around us to stir up the water on us while we were just sitting there. They were harassing us. Yeah, we had our game And then we saved them. And then we turned around and saved them. That's it, I think I slapped you guys last year. You did, yeah! I'm glad to see you guys out here. All right, so. I love that story because I think the hardest thing to do is to be kind to people who are being unkind to you. But obviously these people are like, yeah, they were harassing us and this is karma, but we're not just gonna let them like suffer in the middle of the lake. But would you guys do that? Rashad, what would you no. do? <laughs> no. First of all, Hell let me say no. this, uh, won't he do it, won't he do it? Uh, I am a progressive Christian, I believe in a radical black liberal progressive messiah. and. As soon as this happened, as soon as these people taunted my brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community, the boat blows up. Remarkable. These individuals have more godliness in them than I do because I would have left their ass right there swimming in that water. <laughs> That's what I would have done. Now, I would not have allowed them to drown because I do believe in the sanctity of life, truly. But I would not have put them on my ship. I would have waited. I would have recorded as they did, and you would be playing that clip from World Star because that's why I would have uploaded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, God is gay, guys. I think this means God is gay. Oh my God, Tucker uh, because... Carlson's head just exploded. They want to make you drink <laughs> Starbucks every single day, these God haters. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> No, I just, it's a story in three parts. I mean, it's like three acts, it's beautiful. There's a setup, the middle finger, the implosion of a little rinky dink boat, and then being saved by the same people you're harassing. It's it's brilliant, right? And I totally agree, agree with Dr. Richie that I would not help those people at all. They had life vests on, they're fine, because I also feel like I don't think they're gonna learn that lesson. Like in my, I think 
my most optimistic is like, yeah, because they're gonna go home and they're gonna be like, oh my God, maybe we shouldn't hate on you know the LGBTQ community and maybe we shouldn't have flipped them off. No, they're not gonna do that. They're gonna be like, yeah, oh, of course we should get saved, you know, we're straight. <laughs> <laughs> You're Whatever. probably like, right. Yeah. You're probably right. You deserve to be it. God, I'm forgetting the name of this show that I was resistant to in the beginning, but my husband like really pressured me to keep watching it, and then I fell in love with it. It's this show with Sudeikis. RuPaul's uh, Drag Race. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm sure that's a lovely show as well. Um, how am I forgetting it? The guy. Is it? He's like super. Ted. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. I was yes. Like Ted. I don't watch it, but I know, yes, Sudeikis, yeah. yes. You guys should watch that show, it's good, it's really good. And I wish that I could be a better person because Ted Lasso is the kind of guy who gets like slapped in the face over and over again by pretty awful people. And he just meets them with an insane amount of kindness and compassion and understanding. And I feel like that show or at least that culture or those characteristics is like what we need in society. So I try to think that way when I met with <laughs> individuals that are not so kind, um, but it's tough. It's really difficult to be the bigger person and meet combativeness and cruelty with kindness and understanding. It's like, it's just not human nature. You, you are, I mean, I typically enjoy retaliation. I'm trying to move away from it a little bit. Yeah, that's not God's plan for my life. Whatever that brother doing, that's not that's not what God has me on. So I'm okay with that. Ah, okay, all right, all right, fair but, enough. But then you also think about, you know, obviously, like what is the so-called Christian thing to do? Those who pretend or say that they believe in the Bible and they believe in Jesus's teachings, it would be to turn the other cheek. It is to be Ted Lasso. It is to pick up people who have just flipped you off because they need assistance. Uh, after their boat exploded from a sheer act of God, like that is the godly thing to do. And yet, ironically, I'm sure these, you know, uh, hateful people, the, these like anti-gay folks, are resting on a bastardized version of Christianity to bolster their hateful beliefs about gay people. Can I opine Funny. on that? Mm -hmm. Let me opine on that. Yeah, go ahead. So there's, and this is in scripture. There's a scene where Jesus is in the synagogue and he sees that they are profiteering off of religion, similar to what they're doing today. Mm -hmm. And he gets so upset, he decides to turn over the money exchange tables and he creates a riotous atmosphere and actually destroys property. Mm. That's what Jesus did inside of a church building de facto today. Jesus getting lit. <laughs> he got lit, he got lit. And, and why did he get lit? He got lit because the establishment could not recognize righteousness. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. establishment had become disconnected from humanity. And everything was about the capitalism around the structure of religion rather than the humanity around the right. structure of what religious values should actually teach. Uh, so he was radical in, in more than one sense, non-judgmental. That was radical when he told the Samaritan woman, uh, don't worry about your haters. Tell them that I've had a conversation with you. Well, that was non-judgmental, a radical idea of that era. Uh, and so there are plenty of stories that prove uh, who Jesus was. And he wasn't a pacifist, he wasn't that at all. Uh, hell, he had armed men with him. There was a time one of his disciples pulled out a sword and cut a man's ear off for talking trash to Jesus. Well, that man was always armed. He didn't just bring that sword that day. He walked with Jesus every day with a sword, mm -hmm. just in case something popped off. That's just my two cents. <laughs> yeah, I like I, I like that. I like that. You got to walk around with the sword. I've been talking about that a lot lately, <laughs> <Right>. actually. <laughs> That's what I took away from it. Walk around with a sword or have a guy with you who's got a sword. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. really thinking about Anna needing a guy around her with the sword. It's that uh, would be kind of awesome. Though. It's very <laughs> like a queen of mother of dragons. -esque. There you go. You know? <laughs> yeah, that sounds um, like a lot of fun. Um, no, yeah, I love this. I love it's a great way to start off pride. Like that video on repeat is just a celebratory pride moment. And we should all like, yeah, relish in that. And then paint, you know, paint all the boats 
with rainbow colors and be fabulous, be fabulous, don't hate. And God will God will reward you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I wanna say this because every time I bring up my faith, somebody inboxes me that, that I believe in the Bible and the Bible is adversarial to certain groups. I do not believe the Bible is the actual word of God. Mm -hmm. There are scriptures in there that I cannot get down with. For example, when the Bible says slaves obey your master, I cannot get down with that passage, period. And there are plenty other texts that I don't get down with because God gave me a brain before he gave me a book. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and you know as an as an atheist like i think that it's it's important to differentiate between religious extremism whether it's christianity islam whatever it is right um from i think what most mainstream religious people believe right like i think that people tend to pick and choose what they well, or what resonates with them from the scripture, yep. right? And so, and I think that's okay, right? If, if there's something that you take from it that inspires you to be a better person, then that's great. Um, I don't, I don't particularly like the generalized negative um, framing of religion, right? Because I think that it does demonize good people of faith, uh, and I think that like you know pushing them away is just not a good idea. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> So that's no, and especially when they are some of the most active um, organizers for change in this country mm-hmm. at a time, you know, when we are so isolated from one another, when we struggle to have community, you know, I think religious communities actually uh, have that. You know, there is something to be said about having like a place to go on Sundays or during the week or barbecues or picnics or whatever it is. You know, like, and for sure, orthodoxy on throughout religion, I think. Like we want people to interpret their scripture more liberally because like the other way around is not good. That's like fire and brimstone and crazy stuff. And I think we're in a moment. I do, I'm I agree with Dr. Richie in a lot of ways. And I also agree, I personally am not religious, but I've seen, I know a lot of awesome, like very progressive churches specifically, but all you know, institutions of all faith, that right now there is a window because Donald Trump has revealed that he believes in BS evangelical. If you're rich, that's because you deserved it. What is it called? Prosperity gospel or Mm -hmm, some BS mm -hmm. like this. There's a window around the religious right that has totally abdicated their responsibility to so called family values, to the moral, moral, any kind of morals. God, look at Matt Gates. So, I think progressives are gonna be missing out if we turn our 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 face or we turn on this like already organized body of Americans who absolutely have a role to play and are and have been leaders throughout change in this country. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.